Hi everyone. Uh, so this video is kind of about, I don't know, maybe some, not many hear about or think about. So when you think of the word pleco, or I'm going to specify law card day as what my definition of pleco is. So that is a sub, um, so a family within the order uh, Siluriformes, which are the catfishes. So a lot of people think, oh my god, they're all really big. Most of them are really large. Um, they grow big, they grow fast, and that is a complete misconception. So I would like to draw people's attention to maybe one subfamily and members of another. So I'm going to talk about three species that are small and stay small, and that's it really. So Hyperpotomine is a subfamily of Lauricardi, and this subfamily stays moderately, moderately small. Anywhere from sort of the largest I've seen tend to be around nine centimeters, while um, the smallest is I think is it zero one point eight um, centimeters standard length, standard length excluding the caudal fin. So and that is Nano Plecostomus elenori. You won't really see that in the trade, but there are other smaller members, and the majority of um, Hyperpotomine is small. So this actually includes the genus Otosynchus and I won't talk about Otosynchus because they're not the most inspiring species, um, genus. They're small, they're often grey. You've got Cocoma which is uh, I guess cow zebra patterned but even then they're not anything unusual and I think what people want out of Plex is something different. So it's, small but something that's kind of makes you think oh what's that so the first one i'm going to talk about is hyperpotoma sp meaning it is an undescribed species peru or robocop or orange there are other species called um hyperpotoma sp species peru but this is the robocop the orange the sort of the multiple patterned one it has that sort of orange patterning and it only grows to from what I've seen, so to around sort of five centimeters total standard, um, around that sort of size, about that sort of length, um, they do not get big. Actually, the largest I've probably seen is about sort of three centimeters total length, but not many people keep them. You can expect to pay anywhere between, let's say, fifteen to twenty-five pounds. I think is what I've seen, maybe twenty-eight. And they are small, they are social, or Hyperpotoma are, they're very peaceful, they're sort of faint, elongated appearance, kind of a bit like Sid the Sloth from Ice Age, that's how it looks as a species. You've also got like other Hyperpotoma, there's larger species, Hyperpotoma glare, I think is 9cm standard thing, which isn't massive, it's a grey species, it's got sort of intricate patterning when you look up close. But it's that SP Peru species that is really striking. And they aren't difficult to find. They're often imported. They're not often captive bred, so you won't find them from farms. But they are available and possible to find. Definitely in the UK, not sure about the US. So the next species I'm going to talk about is not a hyperpotoma. Same subfamily, different genus. So this is Parotosynchus epili. And I'll put the names down there because pronunciation pronunciations vary and spelling makes it easier to know what I mean. So this is a really striking species and you've really got to look up close. And it's a small species growing to around, I'd say, three to five centimetres um, standard length. Probably not that big. I've never seen them that big, but they're not too common. You could pay anywhere between sort of... I would say about seven pounds to twenty pounds for this species. They've got those beautiful little green dots on them, and they're active, easy to feed. Like both both of these species, they are herbivorous, so they will require sort of an old foot based out. They're not easy to keep, um, but they're really striking for that smaller aquarium, and to kind of treat them like an autosynchronous of pasture soil and green would be brilliant, and. They are nice, they're sweet little things, um, and I it's kind of an example of look beyond just the typical traditional species people keep. 
The final one is our Stridium dichro dichromum. And this is a really elongated species. This is actually from lo the subfamily Laurel Carne, which is, includes Farlowella, Stereosoma ichthys, Stereosoma. And they are elongated. They aren't, unlike Hyperptomenae, they're not prone to miniaturization, as in the whole subfamily is not miniaturizing. They're, they're kind of diverging a little bit, um, Laurel Carne. But this um, species is strikingly green and it's elongate and it's a difficult one to keep it is an all fruit based diet but it's an example of a small species that is beautiful there are many larger species which aren't easy to keep there are many um large species which are easy to keep and there is that diversity but i've chosen some very striking ones just to give people an idea of where to start looking because there's plenty of places to look and see what you can find um, and generally it is worth try, try and go through like maybe planet catfish keeping an eye on facebook groups and seeing what people have and then looking them up maybe that species is worth investigating and also there's a website like scott cat and there's also german websites which will have loads of resources and it's all about finding species for you um, asking about temperature, thinking about flow rate, thinking about size, diet. I cho choose mostly herbivorous species, but that herbivorous species at high temperatures, but you could choose depending on your setup and what you want your setup to be designed around. Anyway, thank you for watching.